Here on my channel, I like to cover as many compelling topics as I can, but I think today's subject has to be the most exciting of them all. Because today, we're talking about rating systems. Every country in the world has their own individual system of classifying entertainment. Because, of course, a single consistent set of guidelines worldwide would simply be too straightforward. Back in 1934, America introduced the Motion Pictures Production Code, now better known as the Hayes Code, which were an unbelievably strict set of rules ensuring that every movie produced in the US was super wholesome and family friendly so as to please your local church. A direct quote from the code states that no picture shall be produced which will lower the moral standards of those who see it. My god. It essentially placed very harsh restrictions on literally anything you could think of, such as nudity, suggestive dances, any mere mention of sex, superfluous use of liquor, ridicule of religion, naturally, miscegenation, look that one up kids, lustful kissing, and fun. Oh, and also scenes of passion, which I'm very sure these lawmakers have never experienced. Let me tell you, I was not surprised when I learned that all of this was created by a priest. Thankfully, this was all abolished in 1966 after filmmakers realized they literally couldn't make anything, and so came the birth of the Motion Picture Association of America in 1968, which is still in use today. G, PG, PG-13, R, and NC-17. Pretty standard stuff if you ask me. But for some reason, the US decided that they needed an entirely separate rating system for video games, because it wasn't yet complicated enough for the parents who barely read them. For that, we turn to the ESRB, who I'm sure is very familiar to all of you watching. For them, you've got EC, E, E10+, T, M17, and... Ayo, nailed it. Or as parents see them, like this. America is not the only country who felt the need to separate ratings between video games and movies. In the UK, there is the BBFC, which have objectively the ugliest rating symbols I've ever seen. And for games, they have a system with one of the funniest names I've ever heard. Peggy, which is as simple as 3, 7, 12, 16, and 18. The Peggy system is one step ahead of everyone else though, because they actually have little images on the back of the game boxes illustrating the content descriptions, for those who find basic reading too strenuous. These consist of bad language, discrimination, drugs, fear, gambling, sex, violence, and in-game purchases. Thank God. Geez, I've really taken the simplicity of the Australian ratings board for granted, huh? Speaking of, we've got the ACB, which unlike the UK and US is government funded. I'm pretty sure I can do this one off the top of my head. We've got G, PG, M, M, A, R18, and porn. I also really like the implication of the mature accompanied rating. Hey mom, I need you to watch Fifty Shades with me. The box says I can't watch it unless you're here. And yes, in case you're wondering, they do actually put the X ratings on the DVDs. I had to look that one up to confirm for this video, so you're welcome. Which I like to think means someone at the board actually gets paid to sit there and go, hmm, yes, this one's definitely gonna be an X rating. I quite like Japan's system, which goes even simpler with just ascending letters. A, B, C, D, and Z. Because the end of the alphabet is for adult, bitch. If you want to get even more non-specific, Russia and Germany have a zero rating that indicate things that are apparently suitable for babies fresh out of the womb. Anywho, the whole point of me explaining all of that crap was so that we could look at some very odd inconsistencies with these guidelines ever since they've been put into practice. I'm not going to war with any ratings boards here, I just thought these were really funny. And since they evidently feel the need to separate movies and video games, I thought I would too. Movies and television have been generally less strict in recent years when compared to video games, which has led to some very questionable examples. In the US, the 2004 Christmas film Love Actually is rated an R because of one scene with graphic nudity, whereas here in Australia, it's only rated M, which as a reminder, is only the equivalent of a PG-13. I watched this with my mum, damn it! The famously violent, bloody, and definitely not for kids Watership Down received the very kid-friendly U rating upon its release in 1978, which if I had to guess had something to do with it being animated meaning they assumed it was probably fine for kids. And I'm still not sure how movies like The NeverEnding Story, Gremlins, and Ghostbusters all got by on PG ratings. While I was making this video, I randomly stumbled across this bullshit on a DVD I got from the library. This has two ratings on it. What the fu- what? There's also instances of movies not being reclassified as newer, more specific ratings are introduced, resulting in them having a higher rating than they probably should have. The original Halloween, which by today's standards is baby shit, still stands with an R18 plus rating in Australia, since back when it was released, an MA15 rating hadn't been introduced yet. On the other side, you have films that were rated lower prior to the more specific PG-13 being introduced. Hilarious cases including Airplane, which contains just full-on titties. I pity any kids who stumble across that one. However, then you have movies like Dread, 
Red, which is somehow only MA15+, and yet contains enough violence to give some of the goriest R18 movies a run for their money. I mean, hey, I'm not complaining when something gets a lower rating than it probably should, I'm, I'm just saying. Animated movies are usually so heavily scrutinized by ratings that I got unreasonably excited hearing the most simplest of cursed words in Incredibles 2. Screen Slayer interrupts this program for an important announcement. I'll be damned. Ooh, did you hear that? That's only PG. I feel like a criminal right now. Sometimes restrictions even affect the names of products too, with Canada receiving the hilariously altered Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles and Transformers Beasties. <laughs> Shockingly, ratings boards have always been surprisingly lenient with anime for some reason, which I like to think is because everyone that works there is too embarrassed to actually watch any of it. Well, they have been anyway. The worst anime my office discovered is Aramanga Sensei. The plot is beyond what any person would consider as normal or appropriate. Uh oh. Gunbuster, which has a few scandalous naked bathing scenes, is a casual 12 rating in the UK. And while we're on the topic of Hideki Anno, one of my favourite examples is the Australian classification of Evangelion 1.0, which has full-on anime titties, rated PG. I was 14 when I saw this. So yeah, I'm basically trying to say thank you for only giving it a PG rating. I really want to see what Australia rated End of Ava now. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, okay, guys. I'm also still baffled that the likes of Iro Manga Sensei, High School DXD, and Interspecies Reviewers all got away with MA15+, Plus when they're borderline hentai at times. And I literally can't find what redo of Healer is rated, so that's probably not a good sign. I recall borrowing a Dragon Ball GT DVD back in the day from Blockbuster when I was like 10 or something, only to be greeted with Goku vomiting his fucking innards out while fighting Grade A Baby. Rated PG, okay, sure. In the US, the film industry has the unspoken but very amusing one fuck rule in which any more than one usage of the heinous swear will bump up your rating from a PG-13 to an R. You know that unless you're willing to use the R rating, you can only say the F word once? You kidding me? No. You know what I say? Fuck that. As long as it's used in a non-sexual context because the kids can't know what sex is. Because of this, some PG-13 movies have saved it for a vital and emotional moment. Excuse me, I'm Eric Lentra. Charles Xavier. Go fuck yourself. Others, meanwhile, have gotten pretty creative with it. No, no fucking way. way. <laughs> I'm not working with this Wait a guy. minute. Knock, knock. Who's there? Go fuck yourselves. I still find the rule really funny though. Like, okay, the kids are totally fine to hear fuck once, but any more than that, and whoa, okay, buddy, relax. There are, there are children here. Quite obviously, when it comes to violence, a film's rating can have a huge difference in the way it can be shown. PG-13 rated films have to take more liberties in implying the violence, whereas R and above have the freedom to basically show as much as they want, which is sometimes not a good thing. Evidently, the goal in M-rated action films is just to make the violence impossible to follow, so that way the ratings board can't fault them for anything. Robot violence is totally cool though. Unfortunately, a lower rating does mean the potential for a wider audience. Children. And so, it's always great when films are blatantly dumbed down to reach this larger viewership, which has definitely never gone poorly. I feel like it's only been fairly recently that big budget R-rated films have started to become more commonplace, which is understandable considering how many attempts have been made in the past to no avail. It's no wonder why Hollywood has thought for so long that R-rated films aren't generally worthwhile investments. There have been times where the mature content in a film earning at a higher rating has been to the detriment of its target audience. One of the worst examples I can think of is 8th Grade, an incredible coming of age film aimed at the title audience about some of the more unspoken difficulties of growing up, and overall contains an extremely valuable message for middle schoolers. BAM rated R lol get fucked kids! I do really love though how specific American ratings are with their descriptions. Nice age is PG for mild peril. See it's fine, they were only gonna die a little bit. Teenage space vampires. PG for mild alien vampire violence, which apparently warrants its own separate category. Three ninjas knuckle up. PG-13 for non-stop ninja action! Oh fuck yeah! Alien vs Predator. PG-13 for violence, language, horror images, slime, and gore. Oh Jesus, what the fuck is that? See how much fun that is? Meanwhile in Australia, it's uh, mature themes, we think. Although to be fair, the UK is a bit like that too. The Conjuring, rated 15 for threat. Television broadcasts of films are even more absurd in their aggressive censorship, which has led to the neutering of some of the most iconic film scenes and lines, because showing ads every two minutes evidently wasn't damaged enough. Or they could always just, you know, not show that movie. Examples include the absolutely incredible alteration to the best line in Snakes on a Plane. Enough is enough! I have had it with these monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday plane! John McClane's catchphrase in Die Hard received the same treatment. Yippee-ki-yay, Mr. Falcon. And the list goes on and on. These sound like a great big chicken just 
waiting to be plucked. There's also a hilarious change made to Die Hard with a Vengeance, where McLean wears an intentionally provocative sign at the request of the villain, which was changed to a more family-friendly, hateful message in TV showings. This scene is way funnier with the change, though, because it implies the people that confront him soon after were just that offended by his sign. What do you mean you hate everybody? I'm everybody! When it comes to TV programs, classification boards don't rate individual episodes, as to be fair, that would take literally forever. So any releases containing compilations of episodes have to carry the highest rating the show has earned, which results in things like the complete Samurai Jack series garnering an M rating because of the final season. Same goes for Goosebumps. Viewer beware. Goosebumps, the complete series rated M for mature audiences. I think I'd have to say overall though, that Australia's weirdest rating decision was giving Wally an MA15+. Like I didn't think the sex scenes were that graphic. Video game classification is a whole nother story. With our lawmakers still not stripping away the archaic notion that video games are the root of all of our problems, game ratings have always been harsher than that of movies simply because of the belief that player input makes the content in them that much more severe. And ironically, I think that has led to even more people totally ignoring them. The ESRB's inception is infamous by this point as they were brought on by the release of violent video games such as Mortal Kombat stirring up the likes of parents who couldn't be bothered to check what their kids were playing and so clamored for someone else to do it for them. Which of course, was resulted in one of the funniest court hearings in history where Nintendo threw Sega under the bus like two kids arguing over whose turn it is on the Xbox. And let me say that for the record, I want to state that Night Trap will never appear on a Nintendo system. In the earlier days of its creation, the ESRB was very rough when it came to accurate ratings, leading to games such as Snatcher only receiving a T rating for stuff like this. Whereas Night Trap earned itself a 17 plus for content that in movie form would only be a PG-13, all because you can press a button. I find it really interesting how little it takes to bump a game's rating up. Zone of the Enders is a pretty harmless game if you ask me, but all because the PS2 version came with a demo of Metal Gear Solid 2, oops, now it's an M rating. You'd be hard pressed to talk about video game classification without bringing up Grand Theft Auto San Andreas' whole ordeal, in which 50 year old mothers were absolutely shocked at the sight of two naked Barbie dolls rubbing up against each other. Oh man, that's hot. What I find so hilarious about this one is that the scene isn't even normally accessible in the game. You had to hack it in order to make it playable. And because of this, the game's originally published M rating had it pulled from shelves and was re-released with the sales killing AO rating. It wasn't even in the game! To give you an example of how ridiculous these restrictions can get, the ESRB actually forbid Valve from releasing the original box art for Left 4 Dead 2, all because of the chewed up fingers. So instead it was changed to the fingers being curled up and only one of them being chewed on. Nice going guys! Plants vs Zombies was even given a surprising E10 plus rating because of animated blood. Or because the buckethead zombies maybe have a little bit of blood on them. Literally a pixel of it. In the reverse instance, Uncharted 4 was christened the strangely low classification of teen, placing it in the same category as Super Smash Bros Brawl. But no, of course, Ocarina of Time was totally fine as E10 plus, right guys? <laughs> Germany is notorious for being difficult when it comes to games and their presentation of violence. There's a complete ban of any form of red blood being shown, and so several games have changed it to green because apparently that makes it totally fine. I just hope that no one in Germany ever gets a paper cut. This rule then spread to any form of violence against humans or even human-like creatures, resulting in games like Dead Rising and Killing Floor being refused classification entirely. To avoid being banned, games like Half-Life and Command and Conquer 2 changed their human enemies into robots. The German release of Carmageddon 64 even replaced all of the human enemies with these cute little dinosaurs. I'm like, come on, man, they're so cute. I don't want to run them over. Aww. But I will. And it goes without saying that games like Wolfenstein were refused classification entirely, which I do believe makes it... Products that are refused ratings are essentially banned in whatever country they've been deemed too harmful to release in. And though this isn't as common with movies anymore, in Australia especially, a remarkable amount of games back in the day met this criteria before they finally released an R18 rating in 2013. Some still don't quite make the cut though, and don't even get me started on Hotline Miami 2, okay? Please Australia, I really want to play it. What I will bring up though is the time that the Hotline Miami collection was released on the Switch and apparently no one in Australia noticed, resulting in it being publicly available for a while on the eShop with an MA15 rating. That's not even the worst case here though. Mark Echo's Getting Up, Contents Under Pressure, what the fuck is that title? Was banned entirely simply because of worries that it would promote graffiti. Only country in the world to do so. Seriously. Just want to point out that the premise of the game is set in the city of the future, featuring a world where freedom of expression is suppressed by a tyrannical city government. 
Nice going, guys. I always find it amusing when publishers just give up when it comes to censorship. Like with the Australian and European releases of South Park The Stick of Truth, just explaining what happened in the scenes the ratings boards forced them to cut. Anyway, whoa, this video went on for way longer than I wanted it to. But I hope you somewhat enjoyed my ramblings about the strange systems that go into rating our entertainment. If I've learned anything from the research I did for this video, it's that for some reason we have a history of always putting children first, and I honestly don't see that changing anytime soon. I mean, that whole copper shit on YouTube happened simply because we don't have age ratings on the side. If only there were people responsible for children who could decide what it is that they view. Hmm.